doing all, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by uh, joining David in apologizing for being inappropriately attired today. We have had a fascinating day in the House of Commons, and David and I both agreed it was better to be here on time, inappropriately clothed, <laughs> than to be appropriately clothed and late. This is the fifth annual Margaret Thatcher lecture, and the third that we have had in this room. And I am always mindful in this room that it was in here in <laughs> January 2010 that Margaret Thatcher had her last ever evening meal outside her own home or the Ritz, where she came here to do a fundraiser for me and another candidate in advance of the 2010 general election. Margaret was the guest of honor, and Whitaker was the guest speaker, and the chief whip did the auction. And we entitled that evening, Women, brackets for men, close brackets to win. <laughs> I always think of that evening with her over there when we gather in her memory and in the way she still inspires us with her legacy and her memory. I'm delighted to see so many members of our academic council with us this evening, uh, some enjoying David's contribution more than others, I noticed. <laughs> I am also delighted to have with us tonight an old friend of mine, Martin Howe QC, who has provided such robust legal advice to the yeah, lead yeah, campaign. Yeah. Many years ago, uh, I helped Martin when he was trying to get elected to Parliament, and he was up against Dominic Grieve. Oh. And I hope, I hope, if I may say so, without, without being misunderstood, <laughs> Martin, my God, how we wish you had won that nomination <laughs> and saved us from that dreadful, dreadful night. And I'm also delighted to see my old friend, Donal. Donal and I have known each other for very many years since our time together uh, at Southampton University. David mentioned earlier uh, WMD. Uh, Donal and I have sort of in our relationship got a version of that. Uh, we go back so far, we have so much on each other that we will have to remain friends forever or we will destroy <laughs> each other. <laughs> and it was Donald's idea to set up the Margaret Thatcher Centre. Uh, never forget, ladies and gentlemen, that it was set up with Margaret's knowledge uh, and approval. And my God, how we are needed yeah. at the moment in contemporary politics. David made a tremendous speech tonight. He reminded us why we're conservatives. He reminded us what we believed in. And I couldn't help but think as I listened to his speech of the comment that someone made about her, that if she was starting off again today, she wouldn't seek to refight the battle she fought and won from 75 to 1990. But her leadership, if she was starting again, would take the principles she applied between 75 and 90 and apply them to the challenges we face in contemporary politics. We have a generation growing up in this country who have not been exposed to conservative ideas, have not heard us engage in the battle of ideas. A generation who've not heard with passion and conviction from conservative leaders the case for limited government and a smaller state that there is no such thing as government money. There is only money that the state takes from the taxpayer. Haven't heard from conservative leaders that spending and investment are not the same things. And have not heard, as David so compellingly explained, that lower taxes can lead to higher tax revenues. So convincingly implemented by Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan proving the theory that Professor Art Laffer set out. And by the way, just as an aside, I uh, sat next to Art Laffer last year at a uh, speech he did in the United States, and he told a lovely story. I repeat it simply because I thought it was very funny. He said he was in the gym one morning, 
And he said there was an incredibly attractive young lady there. And he said to his trainer, he said, hey, do you have any equipment in this gym that, you know, I could use that might make her attractive to me? <laughs> and he said, the trainer said, yeah, sure I do. And he walked me over to the ATM machine. <laughs> <laughs> David Davis and Boris Johnson had the foresight and then the courage to resign in July of this year when the Prime Minister ambushed them with her checkers plan on that Saturday. They understood that that plan was incompatible with delivering Brexit and not suited to the character of Britain. And they showed their integrity yeah. by walking away rather than selling out and remaining. Yeah. David told us tonight that the story he told of the foreman on the job was apocryphal. I don't know if David saw that, but I repeated this story <laughs> in my introduction <laughs> in the brochure. And I said, I think it is a safe bet that had Margaret Thatcher been the foreman on the Brexit job, we would not be seeing the humiliation of Britain we are seeing today. Yeah. My friends, when I wrote those words some two weeks ago, I had no idea that today would see that total humiliation of the Conservative Party, of our government and of our country in the House of Commons. Shame, shame. And the key thing, that I have thought about for some time about Brexit. It's actually, in many ways, not even about Europe. It's about values. There are so many people in our establishment, in London, who think it is absolutely impossible that you can be in favor of Brexit and be decent and liberal and tolerant and pro-immigration and outward-looking and internationalist. They think you must be a bit thick they think you must be a bit racist. Well, my friends, we are none of those things, and nor are the 17.4 million people, many of whom have never in their lives gone out to participate in a democratic event in our country's history. They knew exactly what they were voting for. They were voting to take back control, and the House of Commons <laughs> must deliver upon that. And in thanking David, who has been such an inspiration to us, and who still has so much more to give to public life, let me just take issue with one little thing. We keep hearing about a second referendum, a people's vote. My friends, we had the second referendum in June 2016. We had the first referendum in 1975. And I am open to people making the argument again to have a third referendum. Now, the first one, the first one was in 1975. Yeah, quite a while ago. 43 years ago, in fact. So here's a date for the diary. Let's have the third referendum on our relationship with Europe in 2061. And in the meantime, let's get on with the job.